Hello everyone and welcome to another In the Field video. Today we'll be talking about the Ohio Valley Military Society's MAC show held in York, Pennsylvania. To start, let's quickly talk about the society that hosts it. The Ohio Valley Military Society, or OVMS for short, is the oldest active society of military and surplus collectors in the world, with over 4,000 members across the globe. Founded in 1965, the society itself is a not-for-profit corporation that essentially promotes the collecting, buying, selling, trading, studying, learning, and preservation of military and other related artifacts and items. It can be joined by anyone through their website with membership offering things like a newsletter, discount for vendors, and free admission to their shows. Each year they host three of these, the Wilmington Show in Ohio, the Mac Show in Pennsylvania, and the most famous of the three, the Show of Shows, or SOS as it's often abbreviated as, in Kentucky. But anyway, let's actually get into the nitty gritty about the Mac Show. Its name, Max, actually has something of a historic significance as it's named after the Blue Max, an informal name given to the Pour les Marie, or for merit medal, primarily given out to military personnel for personal achievement throughout the Kingdom of Prussia and later the German Empire between 1740 and 1918. The name of Blue Max was given after the first fighter ace, Max Immelmann, was awarded one during the First World War. Anyway though, with its namesake out of the way, let's actually talk about the show. It's held in mid-September, going from a Thursday to a Sunday. Thursday is for vendors set up and members only. Friday and Saturday are open to the public. Hours are usually 9 a.m. to 4 or 5 p.m. And Sunday is the breakdown and packout day. Originally, the show wasn't owned or operated by the OVMS, but was purchased a few years back. It had been hosted in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, before being moved to York, about 210 miles east in 2021, with plans to remain there for the foreseeable future. The location it's held within York is easy to find, as it's the York Expo Center, which sees events ranging from monster truck shows to fairs and just about everything in between. Its address is 334 Carlisle Avenue. You really can't miss it, as it's a rather large area with ample parking, which is free by the way, all around. Just look for the giant green and yellow rectangular shaped York Fair sign. To buy tickets, people simply walk up to the reception desks and purchase them there for about $10 each or a two-day pass for a little cheaper than buying them individually. Finally, before we get into the actual show itself, it's worth noting that there are restrooms, ATMs in case you need extra cash, though their limit is only $200 with a slightly high processing fee, as well as a small food window where you can grab quick bites such as hamburgers, fries, chicken tenders, and things along those lines. Okay, so now that we've got all that logistical information out of the way, we can actually talk about the good stuff. Though the show fluctuates in size as far as vendors and table orientations go, it is simple to navigate. When we went, it was broken into rows labeled alphabetically with five aisles cutting through all of them. Tables ran along the perimeter of the room as well. This pretty much means it's easy to cover and keep track of where you've been and if you want to double back to anything later on. Content-wise, vendors from all over North America as well as a few from Europe set up shop, which means there's a rather large variety of military. By and large, a majority of it is World War II era, seeing an assortment of Axis and Allied uniforms, gear, equipment, insignia, weaponry, and accessories. Pricing for things are all over the map as you can get something as cheap and simple as a US web belt for a few dollars to something as expensive as a complete German World War II uniform for thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. However, just about every modern period, with a few even older ones, are also seen. Though it wasn't for sale, there was even an original World War II German Liebermuster top preserved in a glass case. Being that one of the rarest camouflage patterns in all of the world was on display for all to see, you can get an idea of the types of items you can find at this show. Granted, each show will be different and contingent upon the collector's market, along with the popularity of certain items and areas, things will fluctuate. But it's a safe bet you'll be able to browse through a variety of items year after year. Here are a few things we saw a large quantity of that will likely be seen in the future. Stahlhelms. Look no further as you can find tables here full of them, be they German, Austrian, Spanish, and so on. Reference books, history books, manuals, and assorted paper and digital media, from interviews and footage on DVDs to propaganda and informational posters. Racks and tables of uniforms ranging from Southeast Asian camouflage, such as South Vietnamese ERDL, to World War II M42 paratrooper sets. We can go on and on, but instead we'll let the footage do the talking for a little while.
If you want to know more about the show, you can check out the Ohio Valley Military Society's website at sosovms.com or on Facebook as Ohio Valley Military Society and the Show of Shows. Link to both of these can be found in the description below. Now, we didn't go into great detail as far as specific items offered at the show, but rather showcased it in a more general manner so as to help anyone who may be interested in going by providing all the information needed along with an overall feel of it. If you're interested in more long-form coverage of specific items year by year, there are a few other YouTube channels that do this by talking with vendors and other collectors going over individual items quite extensively. If you want to take a look at those, simply type in Max Show Militaria and you'll have no problem locating an assortment of videos dating back over 10 years. Finally, if you wanted to make a small history or military-related trip around the show, Gettysburg, arguably the site of one of the most famous and significant battles of the American Civil War, is only about an hour's drive west of York. We'll be covering that in a separate video as the whole town has quite a unique element to it beyond the history of the battle that occurred there. Plus, the town has quite a bit to offer surplus and military-wise. Thank you to the OVMS and its president Bill Coombs for allowing us to film, and a very special thanks to Steve Turner from Combat Relics for helping with coordinating and getting us access, as well as providing information and assistance in general related to the Max Show. Combat Relics is a company that offers a wide variety of military and collectibles from the First World War all the way up through the modern era. With a constantly shifting inventory, they stand by their items with a lifetime authenticity guarantee. If you want to take a look at what they have to offer, you can go to combat-relics.com. Again, link to which can be found below in the description. Now, hopefully this video was interesting to those curious about the larger shows out there. Though we don't publish too many event-type videos, when we do, we try to structure them to help anyone out who may want to learn more and go in the future. Either way, though, if you enjoyed this one, consider liking it and subscribing, or just check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.